Welcome to the H2O Driverless AI installation video for AWS. In this video, we're going to walk through the process of installing H2O's Driverless AI product in Amazon's EC2 environment. We'll start by looking at the documentation available from the H2O AI site. So we browse to the site, click on the download link. That will bring us to various links for the products within the H2O suite. We're interested in driverless AI, so we'll push through to its download page. On this page, we see some information in a variety of links, one of which is a link to the uh, access to a trial license for driverless AI. We'll go there first in order to get that trial license uh, creation in the works and get that mailed back to us. So we enter our name, job title, company, email address, etc., and a license will be emailed to us. I've already filled this in, so I have an email that I can use with a trial license in it. The next thing we'll do is move on to the driverless AI documentation itself. This is the full documentation set for the driverless AI product and includes information around installing driverless in a variety of environments. We can see some of the requirements here, the need for 10 gigs of free disk space that we look at 64 gigs or more of memory. And we have a quick start table here for the variety of environments in which we can install the driverless AI product. In cloud environments, we can go with NVIDIA's GPU cloud, AWS with a variety of instance types, Azure, Google Compute. In server environments, we support NVIDIA DGX1, Ubuntu and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as well as IBM. And you can even install it in desktop environments. The NVIDIA, of course, that DGX station is uh, for serious use, but Macs and Windows are for experimentation, and Linux, of course, could be a desktop or a uh, experimentation environment. Today we're interested in installing an AWS, so we'll click on the link for instructions on how to do the installation process within AWS. The first thing we see is that we're recommended or we're instructed to log into AWS and select the U.S. East region. I have an AWS window open and I can see that I'm already um, attached to the US East North Virginia region. I then browse to the EC2 console and click on the launch instance button to create a new instance. Our instructions inst uh, direct us to do exactly that, go to EC2 console, launch an instance, and then through the community AMI link browse for H2O AI to get an AMI for the driverless AI product. So if we go back here, select community AMIs and enter H2O AI, we see that in this region there are a couple of AMIs available. I'm going to choose the 1019 version and select that. The next thing that we see in the installation instructions is that we need to choose an instance type. We recommend GPU compute, so I'll go in and browse for GPU compute nodes. We had seen that 32 cores is recommended minimum, so I'll select this P2 8x large. I then can start to step through the configuration screens. There's a uh, VPC configuration for networking, also for the subnet. I'll choose something appropriate for my environment. Step through to storage, the default value of 128 is sufficient for our purposes here. I'll add a new tag to this instance. I like to tag mine with uh, my name so that I can easily, whoop, not that, but name tag with my name and what the instance represents so that I can easily filter and search for them in the instance view. The next thing we'll do is configure security rules. We'll want to have SSH and SCP access to this node in order to upload data sets. There are data sets that come out of the box with the AMI so that we can experiment, but you may want to add your own data set. So the first port is for SSH. We'll then do a port for both the driverless AI instance itself access to that server and I'll add an optional port for access to 
the same source to H2O's flow interface. There's a, an H2O core instance running behind driverless AI, and that can be accessible, and you may want to look at that. So we'll enable that. We can then go and review and launch our instance. Everything looks good here. So I'll launch it and choose my personal key pair so that I can SSH into it and acknowledge that I have access to that key pair. The instance is then launching. This takes a little while to get up and running. So what I'll do is go to the View Instance page and filter on my instances and we'll see that the instance that we're starting is in the initialization state. What we'll do at this point is pause the video for a moment while we uh, get that instance up and running. And once that's up and running, we'll come back and finish off the installation process. Okay, our instance is up and running, so we'll now want to browse to it. Whoop. Um, in order to go in and run an experiment. So we'll paste that. One, two, three, four, five is our port. We agree to the evaluation agreement terms and log into the system. Username and password doesn't matter on this uh, experimental version. I'll just use my username Dave and password Dave to get into that. First thing we notice is that there is no license, so we're prompted to enter that. Remember I said I had an email that had already arrived describing the evaluation process, the key, its duration, and here is the actual key, which I will again copy, and then I can paste that in here. We see that I have a single license, serial number, who it came to, creation date, expiration, etc. So I have a license. I can now go in and add a data set. As I said, under the data directory in this AMI, there's actually some sample data that we provided. If I go into the Kaggle subdirectory and into the credit card environment, I can grab some credit card training data, import that into the driverless AI system. I can go and look at that data and uh, do some visualization on it. We'll automatically do some statistical analysis and determine what fields and features are of interest for clumpy scatter plots, scatter plots, histograms, uh, outliers, for example. We see that bill amount four has several outliers, that bill amount three has one, bill amount one has a couple. There are several in there. We can look at correlation graphs. I can grab a particular node, say education, and see how that correlates to other nodes. This diagram sort of dynamically move around. We can see that it's correlated to pay amounts, that this node here, default payment next month, is not correlated, nor is ID, not surprisingly. So we can browse around there. We can also start a new experiment. So I'll come into the new experiment screen, select a data set. I've uploaded one already, so that's available. Select the target column for this data set. We've got you know, my limit balance. This is a credit card data set that gives information about consumers and how much their bill amount was, their credit limit, how much they've paid in the past several months to try and predict whether they're going to default on the next payment. So that's what we'll choose as our target. I can go in and drop columns. For example, that ID column I don't want. I could add validation and test data sets and select various features within the driverless AI environment, some of which are the experiment settings on degree of accuracy, one to 10, right? The defaults are all five, same thing with how long it's going to run and the strength of the interpretability. I can then launch that experiment and we're off and running. So what we've accomplished is we created an AWS EC2 instance, launched it, I uh, got driverless AI up and running and came in and started an experiment running.